Hey everyone, welcome back to Alchemy with Zero Phase. This is Eric. I'm going to do a quick video on how to use my uh, ZeroGen extension that interfaces with ChatGPT. I had a request from somebody that I do a bit more of a formal uh, tutorial on it. I think I've kind of introduced it in one of my other videos, but I didn't really talk too much about it. So I wanted to create something that was a lot easier to use than some of the other ChatGPT extensions that people have tried to create. I did not feel that they were very, um, just for lack of a better word, user friendly. And so uh, I wanted to create something that I could just add the API key real quick, title, add some seed prompts, or just interface with ChatGPT in general. Okay. I do have my little girl here. She will be making noises. Uh, just watching her in the morning here for a little bit. So, what this is, uh, I a while a long time ago I started uh, creating a prompt generator for ChatGPT, and uh, works really well. I love it. I got to a point though where I was like, I, I kind of wanted something that was easier to get to, so I didn't have to switch to another web tab. And something where I didn't have to type in the commands. Like my prompt generator has specific commands that do things. And so it was just easier to set up an interface that I could just check a checkbox to enable or disable that command. So just to kind of go through this, um, up at the top, I have a, an area here, a panel, where you enter in a title and content. Now, this is apl applies to two different things. It's so when you add a new API key for ChatGPT um, or a seed prompt. So I'm going to walk through and just do an example here. So let's say we go to, um, we want to set up our API key for Chat uh, ChatGPT. So we have to go to openai.com. You're going to log in, and you're going to go to your API section. Okay. It's going to bring you to their uh, to the the panel here, and the one thing we're going to go to is over on the side under the tools menu. There's one called API keys. Okay, we're going to go to this, and you're going to go ahead and create a new secret key. So we're going to go ahead and click that. Um, I guess the, it's going to ask for a name. We're going to go to test key. It's going to show us the new key. This is just a temporary one. I will not have this one as accessible, but I'm just this is just for training purposes. We're going to copy that. Click done. We're going to go back to our uh, automatic 1111 interface. Go to the zero gen tab. We're going to put in the API title. It doesn't have to match what you put in OpenAI. It just we're going to say test a, uh, API key 1, okay? I'm going to paste that API key in there. We're going to select this is a new API key and click add. Okay. Now initially, right now I don't have it set up so it's refreshing this. The Gradio interface doesn't, it's very difficult to get it to refresh and actually show that. It is possible, I just haven't figured it out yet. So in order to get that to show, we would actually need to, uh, I believe, restart the back end. So let me do that real quick. Okay, now that we've reloaded that, we're going to refresh the interface. And when that comes up, we're going to go back to the zero gen extension. And down here, we're going to select the API key selection. You'll notice that it shows our test API key in there. Okay. We can select that. And the other thing that we can add are seed prompts. Okay, so what that means is if you have a a prompt that you are using to generate content or a prompt of your own. Maybe you have a prompt generator of your own or you have mine. You can come up here and you can put in, um, like I have an example, I have a great example we're going to do. Uh, I have one called, the, or that I'm working on that helps generate coloring book ideas based on theme. So I'm going to put in here coloring book ideas. Okay. Now what we do is we go and I'm going to go grab that uh, prompt that I use for that, I'm going to select that, we're going to select all of it, copy it, we we'll go back to here, we're going to paste that in there, okay, and we're going to say this is a new seed prompt, and we're going to add that, okay, and again you need to restart the back end interface. Okay, now that I've reloaded the back end, reloaded the interface, we can come over here and now you can see that we have that in here as well. As you can see, I do have 
some other uh, versions of my prompt generator that I work with. I do have a light version that I offer for free. You can go to my store and you can grab it and play around with that. So once you get that in there, you just select your API key and you don't even need to select a seed prompt, honestly. You just, you can start typing in messages. Um, give me a list of fantasy character types. Okay, and you gotta make sure you select your model. This will auto-populate once you put in your seed. Okay, so we're just gonna do the GPT 3.5 Turbo, okay? The rest of these options are literally just for my uh, stable diffusion prompt generator. Okay, so you don't need to worry about those. I'm gonna actually set that up so that it's able to detect a particular string inside my prompts so that it hides them if it's not available. Um, but once you get that in there, just hit submit. I appreciate your patience, uh, uh, my little girl making noises. She's adorable, I don't mind having her here. So there's your response. So um, this becomes useful, like if you're needing to come up with uh, a list of ideas, maybe you have a prompt that uses the token, the prompt token, you can actually grab that, uh, copy that. Now let's come over here. I'm working on, again, I'll show you my coloring book one. Um, I think it's this one right here. Once you get that put in, it utilizes the prompt token. We'll come down here and paste all these into here. The number doesn't matter. I don't think that's going to affect anything. And we'll just uh, uh, select and we'll do a portrait. Okay, and we'll just start rendering this just so you can see how this, uh, how this part works. So as you can see, it's going through uh, generating coloring book pages based on um, you know, this here, it inserts each of these into the prompt token for the prompt that I use uh, for my coloring book pages. Uh, so it drops it in, each of those gets dropped into there. So I do have another video on that, you can go look at that. We're going to interrupt that. So now, um, so you can see that you can kind of interface with it as you would chat GPT, making requests to it, that kind of thing. Um, if you do have a prompt generator, let's say I want to go try using my coloring book ideas one. Let's put that in there. This one is set up, so I give it a theme. Uh, we're going to say, again, fantasy, comma, and then um, uh, weapons. Again, I'm not going to use any of these options down here. We're just going to hit submit. This is set up to either give 10 or 20. Uh, let's see, fantasy weapon types, maybe. It's supposed to be, give it a theme, give it a, a category, and it's supposed to give you a list. And it's still a work in progress. Let me see if I can get something a little more generic. Hmm. Yeah, I gotta work on that a little bit. It does come up over on this side. So like if I come over here and submit this, this is what it's supposed to give you. So I gotta work on it. Uh, interfacing through the API can be a little bit different than interfacing through the ChatGPT interface. So um, just as a quick example, um, we're going to select the uh, prompt generator light. Um, we'll just say uh, epic. Uh, dark wizard. Should come up with a prompt pretty quick. Mysterious digital illustration, sinister figure with billowing cloak. Anyway, you can take that. It's a really great prompt. Doesn't have any excess fluff. Uh, very succinct visual details. Organized in a way that's like uh, primary subject, secondary subject, and or and then background lighting and uh, uh, other minor details. So you can copy and paste that. Okay. Um, my other prompt generator actually works with these, so you can select maybe four prompts. I want to label them. I'm doing the style, submit. This takes just a little bit longer because the prompts are very structured and they can be uh, quite detailed. Give it a second here to finish up. 
yeah, I tried doing this video yesterday and, and OpenAI was having all sorts of problems. And there's four prompts. Um, sometimes we can do no break. That's one I'm still working on, trying to figure out how I want to actually interface it. It kind of messes with the prompts a little bit. So it's not always accurate in how it presents them, but we'll see what it does here. <laughs> Yeah, so it didn't put a space, but it's still four separate prompts. Um, it did not include the word break, which does work better in a, a SDXL. So uh, it did uh, include in the style of, which is good. Uh, we could take those, create some awesome uh, images. So a couple other things about the about this uh, extension. When you first install it and you first run Stable Diffusion or the automatic 11.11 interface, it does create three different CSV files to store a lot of this information. Um, one of those files, you can click Save Responses and it'll save all these prompts into a CSV file. Okay. Uh, the other CSV file will store the API keys and the third one will store the uh, seed prompts if you have seed prompts you want to use. Okay. Those are stored in the extension, so you go to the uh, under the web UI extension zero gen scripts folder, and you'll see these three uh, CSV files here. So you can go in there, you can actually manually type stuff in if you want, but I've tried to make this as easy as possible in just being able to put it in here, reload the interface, and you got access to those without, <laughs> without uh, too much uh, fuss. So um, I hope this helps, and hope pe I, this gets people excited about uh, utilizing a, a ChatGPT extension for Automatic 11.11 because I feel like the previous ones were just so overly complicated and using terms and words that, honestly, I didn't even recognize. Uh, there was one that was using terms like, oh, God, I can't even remember. Um, Anyway, it, it just I could I couldn't even understand how to use it. So I tried to make this as simple as possible. So I hope you guys like it. Um, hope you didn't mind my daughter uh, babbling along with me. <laughs> she she likes talking with me as I'm talking. Um, and uh, hope to hear some comments, feedback, suggestions. There, this is under development. Uh, I'll be doing some more stuff to it. I want to add uh, a possible. Uh, drop down somewhere in here that will give you direct access to the prompts that you save. Um, it saves them by your request. So the, the, your message ends up being the title of the drop down and then you can go in and select that and it'll show you the prompts that were generated using that. So I'll get that added in as quick as I can. Um, takes time. This is just kind of a side project. And uh, but I would love to hear more suggestions. If there's something you think that would work in this, it'd be fun to uh, kind of a challenge for me to see if I can put it in there. Anyway, great to talk to you all, and uh, hope to hear from you in the comments. Talk to you later.